Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about a little bit of shell scripting. Uh, I'm going to show a mistake that I used to make in shell scripts, as well as a cool little set of utilities that make this mistake kind of go away. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. All right, so I used to write shell scripts that did something like this. Uh, basically, oh, what, what happened there? I that's the wrong thing. Uh, they used to do something like this. Uh, basically, assign working directory to pwd, then cd to, let's say, temp, uh, do some work. So I don't know, echo hello from pwd. Uh, and then after they were done with the work, they would cd back to wd. And so I had to do this sort of work to record the current working directory, do whatever work I need to do, and then CD back. And turns out, oh, well, this this works. So if we, you know, set dash uxo pipe fail here, this works. And if you, uh, well, actually, what I really wanted to demo here is this is something that if it were in a function, it benefits the most. So let's put it in a function and call it. Um, if we run t.sh here, you'll see that it records the Peter, the working directory as explains, CDs to temp, prints out that it's in temp, and then CDs backwards. So everything works fine here, but there's a much better way to do this. Uh, and that is using uh, push D and pop D. Basically, there is a sort of CD stack, a directory stack that Bash keeps track of, and it you, know, you can push to it and pop from it. And so instead of doing this dance to record the working directory, you can actually just use push D directly and then pop D at the end. And it'll basically record what the working directory is when you run push D. And then when you pop D, it'll remove the top piece of that stack and CD back to the place where it was. So if we do this instead, and if we do bash t.sh, uh, you'll see that it still works. We're push, push Ding to slash temp. Uh, it's CDing there. And then when we pop D, it goes back to the directory that we were. Now there is one little downside to push D and pop D, and it'll be more obvious if I remove dash X here. And that is that it prints out the directory stack when it runs. Uh, you can sort of fix that by telling it to be quiet and sending its output to devnull, uh, which I usually recommend, and then you don't have to worry about this. Um, but yes, I recommend using push D and pop D instead of CD whenever you're writing shell. Now again, <laughs> my normal recommendation is don't write shell scripts and instead do this in a real programming language, but sometimes this can be useful. Uh, the main reason that you would want to use push T and pop T, especially in functions, is you don't necessarily know where you're going to be, be called from. Like maybe you're a shell function that's run inside your shell session, and like you, know, you don't want you don't want your working directory to suddenly be something else. Uh, you might be running in a larger program where you want to do just some temporary work in either a tempter or in a particular directory, and you don't want to you know, mess up the working directory of the rest of the program. And so that's where push D and pop D can be really helpful here. It might also be helpful to use trap to make sure that you know when this function exits, it's going to make sure that it pop Ds, uh, sort of a context manager-esque way of writing code. Um, that's <laughs> left as an exercise to the reader. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.